this is 27.8. So, 27.8 says an electric current is passing through a wire, but it's a time-varying electric current. It's an oscillating current, which actually is what really happens in most of the wires um, in your house, because most power is, de is delivered by AC voltages and AC currents. So it gives us an expression to describe the current in this wire that's actually going back and forth. So the current as a function of time is 100 amplitude 100 sine of um, uh, 120 pi t. So if you've worked with sinusoids a lot, you know this is the amplitude and this is the, uh, uh, is the, is the angular frequency. So what you can then start to instantly see is that this is current basically going back and forth in the wire. But that's not even the question. The question is at some point um, uh, at some point, how much charge, or if you consider just one plane, one cross-section of the wire, how much charge from T equals zero to T equals one two hundred fortieth of a second? And you also need to know that the current, if you use this formula, is in amps, which would mean that that amplitude of the... Uh, Sinusoid must be in amps, <coughs> and the time is in seconds. And we're asking for charge in coulombs, or whatever unit uh, we want to give it up. So we know that our original definition of current is you take some plane in the wire, and we say that the current is just the amount of charge, delta Q, that flows in some time, delta T. But we also said you can take that down to the limit of a very small delta T, and write it as a differential that... Um, current is really just the rate of flow of charge, dq dt. So we now know then that the current, this, this uh, continuous expression, isn't just equal to i, it's equal to dq dt, so we can write dq dt equals 100 sine of 120 pi times t. <coughs> so how much... Um, uh, current flows, so you can't just do it by multiplying because it's changing uh, through time. Through the 0 to 240, uh, from 0 to 1 240th of a second, it's changing in a sinusoidal pattern. <coughs> so to get the total, you have to do an integral. So we take the dt over here, and that will tell us how much charge dq uh, we're going to get. 100 sine 120 pi t dt. And to solve it, you just take an integral, right? So the total charge Q would be, if we took the integral of that, well, we want the total charge Q that flows over a certain domain from time equals zero to time equals 1 240th of a second. So the integral then is 100 sine 120 pi t dt. <coughs> so that's just the integral sign. Uh, the integral of sine is negative cosine, so we say then that the Q equals minus, uh, we bring the 100 along, and when it goes to minus cosine, you divide by the derivative of the argument with respect to time, so that derivative is 100, 120 pi, so minus, because the integral gives you a minus sign, 100 is the amplitude, uh, 100 over 120 pi, uh, sine with the cosine, 1, 20 pi t, and that's being evaluated between 0 and 1 240th of a second. Okay. So that's going to be equal to minus 100 over 1 20 pi, and then this cosine, let's see, the cosine of uh, this part is t is 1, under, 1 over 240, that's 120 over 240, so that's a half. So that one is the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. And then minus the cosine at 0, which is 1. So this part uh, just gives you minus 1, which cancels that minus, which gives you a positive um, charge. So then it is, then all it is, is 100 divided by 120 pi. 
is the answer, and that comes out to uh, 0 0.265. And it's in a unit of coulombs. And it has to be coulombs because we were doing current in amps, and amps are coulombs per second. So when we took the time over here as seconds, this was just coulombs. So 0.265 uh, coulombs.